Today, folks, we are going to learn how to draw supersonic step by step. We're going to give you a little bit of tips on the side. All right, let's get into it. Hello, my name is Tony. I'm a Tokyo based artist and illustrator. If you're into art, animation, manga, all that kind of stuff, then this channel might be the right channel for you. So if you can, hit that subscribe button. And、uh, yeah, let's get into it. Oh, yeah, wait till the end because. At the end of every video, I start to answer your questions. So, if you want me to answer your questions, be sure to leave a comment and a like. All right, let's start off with rough sketching and layout. So,、um, lately I've been wanting to kind of go back to my analog roots and I just started drawing with pen and pencil again. So, we're going to start off right now with just a nice, big, wide, lightly written, so you're not going to see this, lightly drawn、uh, silhouette of the sketch. So, This is mainly because personally, if guys like me, when I start drawing, if it's too much, too, if there's too many lines on the page, it kind of throws me off. So I draw extremely lightly. Forgive me. So now we have a little bit of a base drawing. We're just putting、um, Supersonic's eyes in there,、uh, getting his head in there.、Uh, basic body shape. Now it's important when you're drawing that when you're putting the first、uh, silhouette or the initial sketch. Underdrawing of the character that you spend as much time just making sure you get the essence of the character. Because if you don't focus on this at the very beginning, I personally find that the drawings get kind of tight, kind of dead, you know? So make sure you use nice gestures, nice strong, bold、um, strokes, how it kind of flows. Alright, now we're just putting in his fists, his feet in there. We got him running because Super Sonic's fat. Now, listen, like when I was a kid, I remember playing Sonic the Hedgehog. And the first time I got Super Sonic in the game, and it kind of blew my mind because, like, look, there wasn't anything like that at the time. So, like, I saw him kind of turn into like Goku from、uh, <laughs> in Super Saiyan form. And actually, back then, I didn't even know who Goku was. And I remember the first time I saw Goku go into Super Saiyan form, I was like, yo, he looks kind of like Super Sonic.、Hmm, I wonder what came first. Probably Dragon Ball. Anyway. <laughs> As if Sonic wasn't fast enough, Super Sonic is supposed to be even faster than that. So, we really want to get these,、uh, this pose to get that idea of movement, of speed, and all that stuff. And I think we were kind of successful with this. You know, we got a little bit of a perspective, a little foreshortening in there.、Um, you can see that with the fist coming out a little bit farther than the back leg, things like that. So, you can get these illusions by making things shorter or bigger. Uh, and it just helps sell it. Anyway, I think this is a good、uh, base. And yeah, let's move on now to the refined sketching and inking. Now, I brought this into Photoshop. Recently, I've been using Clip Studio Paint for my、um, rendering, but、uh, at this time, I was still using Photoshop. So, but listen, if you're interested in Clip Studio Paint and all that stuff, hey, listen, I got a little link. In the description down there for you below. It might get you a little discount or something. I don't know. I don't know how this works. Anyway,、uh, so we're just putting it in his mouth and、um, his hands and getting all these like features in there. Now, because I wanted it to look extremely、uh, like a nice, clean, smooth, cartoony line, we're taking really broad strokes. We're using the whole arm to get that kind of nice, smooth feel into this、um, drawing. Um, now, the reason why I do nice long strokes is because if you tend to zoom in and get little small little sketchy lines, it, it, it tends to make the line work not as smooth. So that's why it's important to take long, big, confident strokes if you can, and that'll help sell it a lot better and give you nice, clean, smooth. Line. So, maybe, you know, I think in the future, maybe what I'll do is I'll make like a little video teaching people how to get smooth lines for your digital art. Now, if you want that, let me know in the description too. I can easily make a video for that too to show you the theory behind it. So, right now we're just working on Sonic's arm, hands and arms and 
his shoe buckles, <laughs> his uh, legs. His shoes are kind of pointy. Oh, I always wondered, why the pointy shoes? Never understood that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so now for the feet, because this feet is moving forward a little bit, um, it, it's a lot closer to the camera, the virtual camera, um, than to his uh, rear foot. I like to, if possible, have a little bit more line weight on that foot. That's going to give the illusion of separating the different, I don't know, perspective? Not perspective, but the depth. The depth, that's what I'm looking for. The depth of the drawing. So I suggest, if possible, experiment with line weight. And that should um, punch up your drawings a lot more. So if you're like me, um, I didn't understand line weight at the very beginning. And line weight is basically just supposed to help you kind of give a little bit of a three-dimensional, a little bit of more interesting quality to your line work. And it tends to make it punch and pop a little bit more. So generally, I keep my uh, like outline silhouette. I, you, I tend to have a thicker line for that and the internal lines a little bit um, thinner in the middle. So I just did a little bit of a correction there with the mouth and the face. Uh, sometimes you got to make these little changes on the fly. Sometimes when you step away, you say, oh, that's wrong. I need to fix that. Let me, let me uh, zhuzh it. And you just do stoop, 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 and you're done. All right, let's move on now to uh, color and finishing touches. So on this next part of how to draw Sonic, Super Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, we are now uh, going in there and we are putting it in a nice white layer first. I then make lock that into a lock transparency layer and then I start putting my color on, on top of that. So we put in the yellow for the hair, we put in his um, flesh color for his mouth, we get the shoes in there, we get all this stuff in there. But it is contained within that kind of um, uh, layer of white that we put down in the very beginning. And then we can paint on top of that. It makes it a lot more cleaner so we don't have to worry about painting outside the lines. Now another trick that I've been doing recently is I've been taking like whatever the base color is, like for example, the shoes or the hair or whatever, right? We take that base color and we just make a darker color of that and just make that the outline for the line work. I feel that it gives the drawing less of a, how do you say, like a comic, po comic booky, hmm, I don't know, comic booky feel, like when you have just solid black lines. I think if you add a little color to these lines, it helps make your drawings pop a little bit better. I don't know, it feels a little bit better to me. That's my personal aesthetic. Uh, but uh, if you're interested, try that out. So you can always go back into your line layer and do the lock transparency thing that we just did a little while ago to make sure that we didn't paint out the side of the lines and then go over those initial line layers with a little bit of color. And I think it'll help it. So uh, right now we're just kind of finishing it up. Um, we put in our shadow layers. Uh, we put it into another, uh, and then multiply, and we reduce the transparency to that to about 30%. We put in some lightning to kind of give it a little pop to add a little bit of that, uh, you know, crackly lightning, uh, sonic, supersonic thing. Oh God, look at my phone. Who stop that? <laughs> All right, so we're doing a little bit of a chromatic aberration. Ab aberration, aberration, aberration. Anyway, I love doing it. To give it a little bit of an analog look, um, I did before on my um, how to draw a uh, cup head drawing many years ago. Uh, check that out. If not, I can also make a video about that if you want to. So it, it gives it kind of like it's been printed on a, uh, on a, on a printing press and it kind of separates the the, the colors and it kind of gives it that little kind of analog look that I really like. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, Supersonic, uh, the hedgehog. <laughs> I think it came out cool. I think it really came out cool. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, so let me answer one of your questions. So our first question today is, 
what kind of scanner am I using? So uh, yeah, I have been getting this a lot. So ever since we made the video about how to scan your art like a pro, and like in this video, we took analog drawings and we scanned it in to uh, Photoshop and then painted from there. Personally, I use an Epson GT5650, but honestly, it doesn't matter what kind of um, um, scanner you use, as long as you scan it around, I'll say, between 300 dpi to 600 dpi personally i feel that it's good enough for print quality and it's also good enough for if you're start making digital products out of your drawings too so if you scan at those high resolution levels you should be fine it's not so much about the scanner you use but if you do use a scanner oh, i use one of my nice little links below you don't have to but a lot of you guys have been asking <laughs> anyway uh yeah check that out so, all right, that's it. That's pretty much how you draw uh, Supersonic the Hedgehog. Uh, hope you liked the video. All right, bye bye